Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and a small while back I made a video on Tucker Carlson's statements on evolution. And so did a lot of people. His comments were so wrong in fact that I couldn't see how anyone could possibly try to defend them. Well, this guy tried. Tucker Carlson was recently on an interview with Joe Rogan and one of the moments that went viral was where Tucker challenged Joe Rogan on evolution. You know, from what I saw, I wouldn't really call what Tucker did challenging Joe Rogan, more disagreeing. I think Tucker did actually a really good service here to Christians in terms of how we should go about treating this topic, which is basically with dismissal and ridicule. So let's watch. Really? Tucker Carlson was made into a laughing stock because of his statements on evolution. Is, is that what you want Christianity to be seen as? Like just dismissing something and ridiculing it is a good way to show that you have no idea what you're talking about. It does nothing to convince the people who disagree with you and it doesn't really contribute towards trying to find actual answers for anything. Now, do I agree with Tucker's take here? Uh, I don't want to say yes at this early stage, but at this early stage I would like to say yes. Yes, I do. I absolutely agree. With some of the things that Tucker Carlson said, I would be very hesitant to agree with him even if I was a young earth creationist. For example, statements like this. But Darwin's theories, totally, un that's why it's still a theory almost 200 years later. That statement and even agreeing with that statement shows a deep misunderstanding of anything related to science. For example, flat earthers use that argument to dismiss gravity as being just a theory. So you start off, there's multiple stages of evolution. People think it's just basically the tadpole to human thing, but actually there's a whole lot of evolution that has to happen prior to that. So nope, evolution itself is simply species changing over time to suit their environment. That's it. Trying to attach other things to evolution is simply a straw man because Evolution doesn't have anything to say about anything else except for species changing over time. What do we start off with in the theory of evolution? Well, we start off with nothing, right? Well, basically nothing, not, not quite nothing. It's called the singularity. So that's not evolution, that is the Big Bang. If you were to be able to show that the Big Bang didn't happen, that has no bearing on whether evolution happened or not. But I will give him a little bit of credit because even though he did try to say that, oh, it came from nothing, he also did go ahead and say, well, it was a singularity, which doesn't exactly mean nothing. But it is basically the idea that the whole energy and mass of the universe was squished down and concentrated into a particle sized thing. Now, how do we know that this then became this, right? So it blew up, big bang. Well, what we have is this incredible process, really good process called speculative physics. Speculative physics is where you get a bunch of really big brained boffins and they sit down together and they just poke around in the dark and give a guess, right? That's speculative physics. We have no idea how this happened or what this was, but we kind of hope that it's true. That is not at all what the evidence for the Big Bang is. The evidence for the Big Bang comes from a few places. Firstly, the universe appears to be expanding and we can see this due to redshift in galaxies. This implies that things used to be a lot closer close together. You run it back far enough and everything must have been very, very, very close. Now if that were the case then there might be some kind of evidence that that occurred. And we found that evidence with the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now it is a lot more complex than that and I'm not going to pretend like I fully understand everything, but that's the general gist of it. It isn't just wild guesses in the dark. And why do we do that? Well, God forbid that there might be a God. I'm not quite sure that God would forbid that because that would mean that he ceases to exist. In all seriousness though, it's not about whether God exists. It's just following the evidence wherever it leads. Stage two is the evolution of the elements. Basically at the beginning, the theory is that you start off with hydrogen. And of course we know today that we have lots of elements. We don't actually see them or witness th them evolving. Deep down in the, the very core of stars, there's this process called nucleosynthesis. And nucleosynthesis is what creates all of the other elements that we see today. Now, unfortunately, can we test this? Can we observe this? No, because it's happening really far away in probably the least possible place to test anything of this nature, the very core of stars. Again, that is not evolution. And not only is it not evolution, but we know 
that stars produce elements. You want to know why we know? Because we're trying to do the thing that stars do to produce electricity, nuclear fusion. We know that if you put atoms under enough pressure to overcome the forces that keep them apart, then they will combine and form a different atom. Now stars have a very large gravitational field. So of course, in the core of stars, there is going to be huge amounts of pressure, which of course is going to be able to cause nuclear fusion. If you disagree with that, I kindly suggest you publish a paper to show why the entirety of nuclear physics is wrong. Also to add to the point, the way that helium was discovered was actually from our sun doing spectroscopy on it. The results that they got during a solar eclipse indicated that there was an element there that had not been discovered before. That element was helium, and later we discovered that we have that element here on Earth. I bring this up because we can see the elements that stars are made of and the elements that stars produce. We know which elements stars have in them due to spectroscopy. It is a verified science that has made accurate predictions before. If you want to disagree with that, then please explain how we found evidence for helium before we actually found helium on Earth. Then, after stage two, you have stage three. We've kind of skipped over the creation of the Earth. That's where a force, personal, miraculous force, called gravity pulled in a bunch of dust and gas to make the Earth, and then also put a moon one four hundredth of the size of the sun, one four hundredth of the distance to the sun, so that we could have lovely eclipses. Really amazing, this gravity thing. You know, it, it sounds like this guy is saying that he doesn't believe in gravity. No wonder he's defending what Tucker Carlson said. It almost sounds like he's denying all science. I mean, we've basically gotten denials of nuclear physics already. Also, the whole thing about the moon being just the right size to be able to just give us a total solar eclipse is only how it is at the moment. If you go further back in time, then the moon would have appeared a lot larger in the sky than it does today. And in the future, the moon will get so far away from the Earth that there will be no such thing as a total solar eclipse here on Earth. And we're going to the creation, the evolution of life from non-life. Again, that is not evolution, that is abiogenesis. We don't actually know what happened there. So what happens? Well, here on this planet, you have volcanoes that are going off constantly and they create an atmosphere and then that atmosphere produces rain. Sorry, you need my diagram. That atmosphere produces rain on the rocks and it rains and rains and rains and rains and it creates a primordial soup and that soup spontaneously creates life. Yeah, like that's what happens. Like just life, life is very simple. It is not molecularly complex at all, like single-celled organisms, dead easy, anyone can make one of these. I mean, he's actually kind of right when he says that anyone can make a single-celled organism. Like, technically not anyone can do that, but a lot of people do. Granted, it doesn't really stay a single-celled organism for long, but a lot of people are able to make them. But let's put aside him accidentally getting things right by being sarcastic. If a biogenesis occurred, then the cells that it produced, or whatever it produced, would have been a lot simpler than what we see today. But that being said, as far as I'm aware, abiogenesis is still a hypothesis and has not been verified. But the same thing applies to every other hypothesis for how life first came about. And so this is how life was created, and this process is called abiogenesis or abiogen. I don't know how you pronounce these words, okay? You know, if you're unsure about how to pronounce something and you're talking about it, it's a really good idea to maybe look into how it's pronounced. And also, I don't know how you're talking about abiogenesis without having heard the term abiogenesis before. Sure, it's not that important, but still. And of course, unfortunately, like some of the others of these, it's not something that we can see or demonstrate or replicate, but once again, faith in evolution is all you need. Well, out of everything you've brought up so far, that is the only one that you can make a case for there being insufficient evidence for. And that is where I go, I don't know what happened. It is likelier than some other things that abiogenesis could have happened, but I can't say for certain. So no, I don't have faith that it happened. I don't know whether it happened. And then you have stage four, and stage four is known as macroevolution, and that's what most of us would think of whenever we think of evolution. And that's where you take this very simple single-celled organism, and that amoeba, or whatever it was, suddenly just became an insect. Like, just decided, I'm gonna be an insect now. So I get that he's trying to do an oversimplification here, but it's so oversimplified that it's just wrong. 
it would definitely take a lot of time for a single cell organism to evolve into something like an insect. Painting it as, oh, this just suddenly happened, I feel is very disingenuous. And again, that's very simple and it doesn't take trillions upon trillions of molecularly complex and difficult adaptations, most of which, almost all of which, would be counterproductive. So again, in his sarcasm, he's kind of right. Evolution doesn't require trillions upon trillions of mutations. The human genome is only 3 billion base pairs long and most of that doesn't actually do anything. As for mutations that are detrimental, well, there's this thing called natural selection that usually stops them from being too prevalent. And then one day, one of those insects just manifested an eye. Very easy to do, once again, simple. Well, eyes are an example of something that can begin really simple and then evolve into something complex. Because it turns out that light sensitive cells are an advantage over no light sensitive cells. All that has to happen from there is they just have to get more precise. Once again, all of this happened very long ago and it's very hard to prove and slightly unfortunately didn't leave any fossil record, but don't worry too much about that. What are you talking about? There is a fossil record. Why are all these people pretending like there is just no fossil record that exists? We know it's true because sometimes we see birds of almost the same species, but you put them in a different environment and over time they create a, a slightly longer beak or they, they develop a slightly longer beak than others would. And therefore, that's how we know that we all came from wet rocks. Well, no, that's how we figure out that over time, species evolved to fit better in their environments. We can then look at the fossil record and go, oh, well, looks like it's been happening for a very long time then. We can also look at our DNA and go, huh, our DNA is surprisingly similar to that of a chimp. We can then find fossils that show that, oh, it looks like we both have a common ancestor. In order to avoid needing a single miracle by a creator god for whom we have lots of evidence, we just need innumerable miracles with no cause whatsoever for which we have no evidence at all. So firstly, I'd like to know what all this evidence for this god is. Is it actually good evidence? But secondly, even if there is a god or gods, that doesn't mean that evolution can't have happened. In fact, the evidence still points to evolution having happened, regardless of whether there's a creator. But in all seriousness, why is evolution still held on to so strongly? Well, in order for atheism to be true, you need an explanation that doesn't require God for all of this incredibly complex life that we see around us. Well, no, because you can be a Christian and still believe in evolution. That is where the evidence leads. And in fact, I'd say that the reason why a lot of Christians reject evolution is because they feel like with evolution being true, then there's no reason to believe in a God. But when evolution falls, and evolution is falling, then atheism falls too. Well, evolution isn't falling, but let's say that evolution was shown to be false. I wouldn't suddenly believe in a god. The claims of evolution is true or false and a god exists or doesn't exist, to me, are two separate claims. You could have god exists and evolution is true, you could have god doesn't exist and evolution is false, or you could have god exists and evolution is false, or you could have God doesn't exist and evolution is true. I feel like when people say God must exist if evolution is false is a very lazy way to say, I don't know, so therefore God. People need to be more comfortable with accepting that it is okay to not know things sometimes. Anyway, that was the video and I can kinda see why he defends Tucker Carlson. And the reason to me is they both have a very similar level of understanding of evolution, which is to say, None at all. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me do in future videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Vermont1777, Tony C, Roshina Keller, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, definitely not NASA, Mori, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee, link in the description. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.